So we're looking at question 1120 today, <clears throat> a maximum average subtree. So given um, the root of a binary tree, we need to find the maximum average value of any subtree of that given tree. Um, so if we give a look at the example that we have right here, uh, 5, 6, and 1 uh, input, um, the one that we visualize right now, and then the output is 6. The reason why we have 6 is because for the node with value 5, we have the average 5 plus 6 plus 1 divided by 3, which is 4. And then for the node with value 6, we have an average of 6 divided by 1, which is 1, because it's just the node that we're counting and it does not have any subtrees. And then the node with value 1, we have the average of 1 divided by 1, which is 1. So the maximum of all of these three is six, thereby the answer is six. Um, as soon as we see um, a binary tree problem or just a tree problem in general, it's safe to, most of the times, majority of the times you can assume that the problem um, can be solved using a recursion and this problem is no exception to that. So for every single um, node, all you need is the sum up to the sum of that particular node plus the sum of all of the subnodes and all of the uh, nodes that uh, the number of nodes that come underneath that, including itself. And you need to keep uh, that state recursively. Um, so we will go over every single node, keep a track of, of its sum and the sum of all of its children as well, and then the number of nodes that we will see um, as we traverse through uh, the nodes beneath. Um, so let's get started. The time complexity would be of n because you're recursing through every single node and the space complexity would also be of n because you're, you would be saving of uh, n states and we will see in a minute as to why that makes sense. Um, <clears throat> since we, we, with every single state, as soon as it's ready, we want to uh, see if it overrides the max that we have already. To do that, we would want to keep a global state, so we will initialize that in the class itself. So let's initialize that to max. Um, and within the main function, uh, let's uh, assign the value. Um, have a helper method which just takes the root, and then in the end, you would just return max. Uh, in the helper method itself, the return value will be a 2D array of size 2 where the first um, place will be taken by the sum and the second place will be taken by the number of nodes. Um, so let's say, um, so this would be the signature of the method. Uh, let, okay, so this was the base case. So if node is equal to null, you would just return a new array with but with zero values, so zero sum and zero nodes so far. Um, and then you would initialize two values. So in sum would be, so the sum you will take from that particular node with the, its subnodes that will be calculated recursively. The sum would be, at this point at least, it would be the value of the node itself. And the number of nodes would be at least one because we are counting the node that we're looking at right now. So we call, that recursively on both the left and the right. So we have node dot left. Um, <clears throat> we do the same for right. Right. Okay. Um, and once we have that, you want to add all of that. So left of zero plus right of zero. So this is where we'll be storing the sum. Um, and the nodes would be plus equals the same, but but with the first index instead of the zero with the index. So left and right. Now that we have uh, the entire state uh, computed, you want to check if it actually all writes the max. So max would be the max seen so far and uh, with the new one that we have calculated. So sum of my road zero divided by nodes. So the reason why I'm multiplying it by um, a double is because the result is expecting a double. Um, so that's the reason why we have this. So the so the result is actually stored that way. Um, okay, so we initial, uh, 
we update the max and then in the end what we're returning is you return to the array with the sum and the number of nodes that we've seen so far cool and let's quickly run this cool passes the first case uh yeah okay so it passes all the other test cases as well all right so if you have any questions about this problem or how to solve it uh please let me know in the comments below is there any other questions that you want me to solve um leave that in the comments below as well don't forget to subscribe to the channel to keep updated with the new videos coming up thank you